Good morning, so today's topic is the question we get asked all the time, which is about borrowing capacity. How much can I borrow? Uh, my name is Max Phelps from uh, Golden Eggs, where we're on a mission to help people stop worrying about money and get on the path to financial freedom. And we're joined today by Tammy, uh, who's on FaceTime. Tammy, how are you today? I'm well, thanks, Max. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. I, I, I noticed you didn't didn't comment on my, my hair. I, um, I I took the clippers to my hair last night, uh, yesterday, for the first time I... in... <laughs> That's very kind of you to say so, but I was getting quite woolly on top, and so after what eight weeks of lockdown or something, Kelly ordered me some uh, uh, clippers that arrived yesterday. Uh, sorry, the day before, um, and it reminded me of actually why I gave my last set of clippers away. <laughs> was it a disaster? The thing is, it's like it looks really straightforward. A hairdresser will just come along and zip the thing, and, it, and ten minutes is all done. When you do it yourself, you spend half an hour bending your ears and doing all sorts of stuff and at the end of it you realize you've left this big tuft at the back and someone else has to come and fix it for you so it's just not worth my time clipping my own hair if the hairdressers are open yeah but you should trust kelly i mean she she would do a good job and i'm sure she has oh she would probably yeah i know but it's like she couldn't be bothered with doing that sort of stuff again she'd rather i go and pay someone else and get her to do it she'd find it too stressful right um but uh Actually, this does remind me of a funny story I do need to share with you. We were living in Vietnam, and our eldest was about 14 at the time. And we went to this local hairdresser, and we said, do mine, you know, number two at the side, number three on top. Great, did my hair. <clears throat> and then Josh was next, uh, our eldest, and he said, oh, what about for him? He said, yep, same as dad. And then we sat there chatting, and while we're chatting away, um, Kelly suddenly looks up, and shrieks at the person cutting his hair because they'd done the number two and they'd done the number three. Then they got the razor out and cut the widow's peak into his hair. 14 year old boy with his hairline like this. Oh my God. We had to write a note and send him to school with a hat for the next, uh, next few days. Anyway, uh, what's the question for today, Tammy? Well, I'm looking to purchase my first investment property. Um, I just, and I've got quite a bit saved up. I, I do, I've been saving for the past two years. I just don't know what my borrowing capacity is, like how much I can buy for, how much I can use, I've got no idea. Okie dokie, so let's break the problem down. So borrowing capacity depends on three different things. So the first thing is your, your savings, which could be savings, it could be equity, could be a gift. The second thing is your income. And the third thing is your expenses. Now, I don't know if these are your numbers or you're making up the scenario as we go along. Um, I'm fascinated to know now. Uh, but what have you got for savings? Well, like around, you want the exact figure? Well, like it's up to you. It's up to you. We're on, we, we, this is getting published. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got around 40K saved up. Okay, so 40K saved up. Um, and how much do you think you'd like to buy for? Uh, probably like a little place, not in Sydney, maybe in Queensland. I've seen places like for 400K, like townhouses or other areas like that. Great, okay, so $400,000. Um, you might think that your $40,000 is 10% of the value of that property. The problem is, is that actually, if you buy a place for four hundred thousand dollars, you've got a bunch of costs like stamp duty and legal fees and bank fees and so on, and that's probably going to cost you around about twenty thousand dollars. So the Yikes. first twenty thousand of your forty, if if you're buying an investment property, is going to disappear in in costs. Now, if you were buying something in New South Wales that you could theoretically live in for six months and get the benefits of the first home buyers. Uh, stamp duty saving, then your costs would probably only be about $5,000. And so you'd have about $35,000 to put towards the property, which is a bit short of 10%, but not too bad. Um, my suggestion though is try to get to that 10% if you can. Um, 
there's a whole bunch of stuff on first home buyers. We should do another, another video on that one. Um, so that's the first test is have you got enough? And the answer to that question at the moment for what you're talking about is no. But if we wind it back and say, well, what if you bought a place for say 250? If you bought a place for 250, your costs and so on for that are likely to be about $13,000. And so that would give you $27,000 to put towards the property, which would give you a 10% deposit. So your borrowing capacity already has been lit, has been reduced from 400 to 250 based purely on your available funds. Now the second one, which is really interesting uh, that we look at is income. Uh, perhaps best not to talk about income on this one. Um, but what I do wanna share is that um, I went through 10 online calculators from banks and mortgage broking groups and, and quite big companies and if I put in exactly the same information about income and what interest rate I thought we could get and what expenses I thought we had, the borrowing capacity varied from 500, on a $100,000 income, the borrowing capacity from these calculators varied from $500,000 up to $980,000. Oh my gosh, how? because <laughs> some of the calculators are wrong and broken and don't work properly. Um, so first thing is income. Um, so when we use the example of income of $100,000, a lot of people say, well, I'm earning good money, surely I can afford uh, an investment property, and that may well be, or, or a property, that may well be the case. Now the rule of thumb that we use is about five times income is a comfortable level of borrowing. So if you're earning 100,000, then a $500,000 borrowing would be good. Now, some lenders have got maximums built into their own internal calculators, not the ones they put on the website, but the ones they use to approve your loan. So most lenders have a, have a limit of seven times your income. So it's an internal hard limit. If you ask for more than that, they'll simply say no. But, that, but one of the lenders had an online calculator that if you put $100,000 in, it would say the maximum borrowing is $780,000. And I know for a fact that lender will decline the application for $780,000. Right. So it's, it's dangerous to look at that and you're always much better off talking to a good broker who will break it all down for you. So the first thing is, is income. The problem is then if your income is, is, a, is a decent level, you should be able to borrow a decent amount. But then your expenses could be low or could be high. Obviously right. the, more you're, the higher your expenses, the less you've got left over to put towards a mortgage. Yeah, um, now, lenders have their own minimum level of expenditure. They use a thing called a Henderson expenditure matrix, which, which is a, it's from a university in Melbourne, but it tracks what people spend roughly per each level of income and each, each household type. So someone earning $100,000 who's single will be able to borrow more money than someone who's hundred thousand dollars and in a relationship because there's two of them and if that person puts an application in the lender will assume they've got to support the other person right now on a hundred thousand dollars most of the calculators assume expenses of around two thousand dollars sorry most lenders assume that but some of the online calculators have no minimum so the way I was get able to get it up to 980 was to say they're living at home paying no rent and their living expenses of $500 a month. When in fact, lenders won't count, you know, if you live cheaply, they don't care. They'll say that you spend a minimum 2000 bucks. Right, because I live, you know, at home with my parents and I don't pay rent, obviously. So, but none of that's taken into consideration during the thing. They're just gonna take it as 2000 or whatever that bracket is. Correct, that's exactly right. Because because they'll make the assumption that you're not gonna live at home forever and therefore you might move out and then you'll start having to pay your electric and gas and other bits and pieces. And therefore your living expenses will be at some point in the future at that Henderson expenditure matrix level, which is around $2,000 on $100,000 income. Um, the other thing is now you mentioned buying an investment property and you might think, oh, this is brilliant. I'm going to buy a property for $400,000. It'll probably rent for 400 bucks a week in, in some of the areas that you're looking at. But uh, lenders assume that you have a minimum rental cost 
So even though you're living at home rent free, they have what they call a notional rent figure. And for most lenders, it's about $150 per week per person, which is $650 per month. Okay, so they'll add that into your expenses. Now they'll also add into your expenses any credit card limits. Have you got a credit card? No, and I do not plan to have one ever. <laughs> you know that that makes me really happy because credit cards are dreadful. There's a whole other video we can do about credit cards, but um, credit cards just encourage overspending. Um, and we do it by accident because we're not very good with counting and money in general and credit cards just play on that to help us spend more. But you could have a credit card that you pay in full every month, you never pay any interest on that card, you think the balance is zero, but if your limit is $10,000, most lenders will assume now a monthly expense of around $380 associated with that $10,000 credit card. And the only way to get rid of that is to close the credit card. Otherwise, they're just going to assume it. Um, the other element that gets that people often miss, and it's missed in most of the online calculator, is hex. Ah, uh, I forgot about that. Yeah. So, if you're paying hex, so if you're earning, if if one person's earning a hundred thousand dollars with no hex, then their net monthly income is around about six thousand dollars. But if someone else has a $100,000 income and has HEX, then their monthly income is gonna be around $5,450. So they've got about $550 of HEX to pay. And they might not even see it, because in their pay slip, it just comes up as a, as a deduction on their pay. But it, it's, it's around $550. Unfortunately, uh, every lender will have a different way of doing this, but one of the major lenders currently in their approval calculator that they use in their business and run their applications on, if you buy an investment property that will rent for 400 bucks a week, 400 bucks a week is $20,000 a year. Now, they won't ever count 20,000, they'll take off costs for like agent fees and whatever, and it's usually around 20%. But, but when you take that down to $16,000 a year, they'll add that to your income and assume you pay hex on that bigger amount. Oh. And the hex on that would be somewhere around about $750 or $800 a month. Oh. Now, in fact, when you pay hex, it would be based on your rental income minus your expenses minus your mortgage. And their own internal calculator, I, I had to write to them yesterday to say, listen, your calculator's broken um, because we've, we've got a deal that that's, should be passing, but it's failing because they're assuming someone is, is paying more hex than they are because right. they're assuming that they, two parts, one part of their calculator says, um, oh, income plus rent, that gives you the hex. And another part of the calculator says, income plus rent, Minus interest means you only pay this much tax. Right. And so if the property is negatively geared, then they actually, you actually pay less tax. Yeah. And you actually, actually would pay less hex too. But their own calculator says the person pays less tax, less tax and more hex. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when it comes to your borrowing, um, anything like uh, hex uh, credit cards come into play, notional rent comes into play. And then when lenders assess what you can borrow, uh, you might get, uh, let's say you've got a loan on a $400,000 property of, you probably need a loan of about 300 and, uh, well, let's say $380,000, which would be a 95% loan. On that $380,000, you might get an interest only mortgage. And on that interest only mortgage at around 3%, you might spend about, um, the, the mortgage would cost, might be about uh, $200 a week, okay? So you've got a mortgage and you're paying $200 a week. And you might think, well, I can easily afford that because the rent's 400 and it's fine. But firstly, they'll go, well, the rent will take from 400 down to 80% of 400, which is 320. Secondly, they'll take that, uh, they'll, they'll want you to be able to afford the mortgage, not at 3% interest only, but at five and a quarter percent principal and interest. Right. 
and on a $380,000 mortgage, this is testing my, my mental maths here, um, I think on, a, on that level it's going to be uh, somewhere around about uh, 130, let's call it 132, about $500 a week. Um, so on the lender's calculator, it will come up as a $500 a week expense. So you think you're earning 400 and spending 200, you can easily cover it, and they'll go, no, 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 you're earning 320 and spending 500, therefore you've got to come up with 180 bucks a week gap, as well as covering your notional rent and your notional living expenses based on living out of home. Right. Which based on your current income, I don't think you can afford. But based no. on $100,000 income, you probably could. Yeah. And that kind of leads me to another thought of mine, which I've had recently, and that's, um, you know, I've been, in my any spare time that I get off uni, I just go on real estate and I look at beautiful homes and everything and kind of torture myself. But one thing I've been seeing that seems more affordable, but I don't know if it's a good option, is buying off the plan. So what do you think about that? I think we should save that for another video and I think we should wrap this one up because if we've got the borrowing capacity nailed, my guidance on borrowing capacity is take your income, multiply it by five, that will be a comfortable level of borrowing. Um, but certainly you're not gonna be able to go past seven for most lenders, but rent can be counted in on top. But talk to a good broker and, and they'll get it right. Um, uh, and you know the way that we always work at Golden Eggs, which is always to be genuine. Have fun. And stay curious. <laughs>